All right, welcome to this uh, first video for this unit where we are going to explore the properties of gases. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, start talking about the different um, properties that gases have and the different terms that we're going to use throughout the unit. And so right now we have a solid and if you uh, take a look, you can heat it up here. So you can heat it up and the solid eventually will turn into a gas if you heat it up enough. And so what I want you to notice is, notice the pressure gauge here. All right, so notice the pressure gauge. So I'm gonna restart this, we're gonna do it again. Uh, take a look at the pressure gauge. Right now it says zero, but notice that the moment that a particle collides with the wall of the container, that's where it starts to exert a pressure. And we're gonna talk about how pressure is the collision of particles with the walls of the container it's in. Or like in this room, there's pressure and the, pre and the particles are colliding with my skin. And so um, you can see now it's a gas. Look at how the particles are all over the place. Um, and let's go ahead and t uh, talk about a couple things. First, notice how all of the particles are not going the same speed. Some of them are going faster than others, but there is an average speed. So we wanna keep this in mind when we talk about a couple things um, in the video. Notice how the particles, how they interact with each other. We're gonna talk about how in an ideal gas, the particles are just gonna fly past each other and they're not gonna interact, but the reality is that they do have a certain force of attraction. Uh, we talked about intermolecular forces before, so you can imagine what those forces of attraction might be. But um, the other thing too is, uh, notice how they're in random, rapid uh, motion. And so their motion is all over the place. Um, but notice this too, notice how we add temperature Notice how as we increase the temperature, what is happening to the velocity of the particles? And I know it's kind of hard to see at first, but uh, what we can do is switch to this one here. We can make it a gas. And notice how if we increase the uh, velocity here, or I mean increase the temperature, the velocity of the particles increase as well. And so this is definitely something that uh, we need to consider uh, when it comes to gases, that temperature really is the measure of their velocity. And this is what we're going to talk about uh, in the notes here. But so notice how um, as we increase the temperature, it is moving faster. And I'll show you by doing that again. Um, notice how it's there, you know, when we bring the temperature back down, it's a lot slower. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. Pressure is defined as the force per unit area on a surface. And essentially what it is. Uh, what pressure is, is how much force are the gas particles applying when they collide with the walls of the container. So if you can imagine there's uh, air around us, there's gas around us, and those particles are colliding with the walls um, around us, they're colliding with us as well, and it's how much force they're applying when they collide. Um, it, the uh, equation for pressure is force over area. We will not be using this equation at all, but it's how much force is applied per given area. Um, the pressure of a gas is the force that is exerted on the walls of the container. And so that's, you know, if we, um, in the morning when I'm making my coffee and I put hot coffee in here, sometimes there's a like buildup of pressure in there because it gets hot and it's causing uh, the particles to collide with the container more. Um, uh, barometers are used uh, to measure atmospheric pressure. And there are many different units for atmospheric pressure. Um, there's four listed, or there's three listed here, um, but there's many, many different mores. Uh, these are more uh, units. And so we're actually, we're gonna encounter four in this class, but um, the, the main ones are atmosphere, millimeters of mercury, and kilopascals. And the other one is tor, which is similar to millimeters of mercury. So um, we will be encountering these units, and I'll talk about that more as we go. But um, there is a conversion factor between those units. One atmospheric pressure is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury, uh, which is equal to 101.325 kilopascals. And so I want to talk about one atmosphere. Um, at sea level, we experience one atmosphere of pressure because there's one atmosphere above us. But as we go up, as we go, let's say we're hiking a peak in Colorado, uh, we have less atmosphere above so the pressure around us is less. Uh, it's kind of like in a pool, when you dive deep into the pool, the deeper you go, you start to feel the pressure in your ears a little bit uh, if you go into a really deep pool. 
Um, and so it's a, it's a similar concept. The more atmosphere we have above us, the more pressure there is. Uh, millimeters of mercury, what that comes from is they took they a tube of uh, mercury and they put it upside down to a pool of mercury. And what happens is the weight of the mercury pulls, uh, the, it, the weight of the mercury causes the, the level in the tube to go down, but it's a sealed tube. And so there's only so far that it'll go down. And um, the idea is that the more pressure there is on the outside pushing down on on the uh, on the mercury, the more mercury will go up into the tube, and so that's how many millimeters high the mercury is. Uh, they kill Pascal's uh, some um, dude named Pascal came up with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about temperature, and temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample. And so kinetic energy is the energy of motion, and as you increase temperature, you're increasing that kinetic energy. In fact, that's what um, that's what temperature is. It's how much the particles are moving. So if you think about your stove and you turn on your stove and it gets really, really hot, well, literally why it's hot is because the particles are, are moving more, they're vibrating more. And that vibration, um, when you touch it, interacts with the, you know, atoms in your skin and all that, and it uh, causes them to uh, absorb some of that vibration uh, energy. So um, particle diagrams, uh, we'll talk a little bit about this, but particle, particle diagrams are show um, the, di the direction and the magnitude of the direction that particles are traveling. And, and so this is an example of a particle diagram. So um, look at uh, this particular uh, vector here. Notice how it's smaller than this one. This one is larger. And so the larger the vector is, the faster it's moving. Um, the smaller it is, the slower it is moving. And so notice how uh, we have particles moving at different velocities. But the temperature of this gas, even though they all have different velocities, the temperature is the measure of the average of all of them. Uh, we also have um, a variation of velocity distribution diagram. Uh, and this describes um, how many particles um, in a gas are moving at different speeds. And so here's an example of this. Um, something that I want to point out is this, um, first off, is a uh, diagram here and if you uh, take a look this peak here right here is the average velocity and so we can see that this is the molecular speed right and this is the fraction of molecules at that speed and notice how um, oxygen gas its average velocity is somewhere around here notice how hydrogen gas its average velocity is somewhere around here and so what I'll say is these are actually all the same temperature, but oxygen gas is moving slower because it's got a larger mass. And so we're going to talk about this more in class, but what I want you to take away from this right now is first off, all of these have the same temperature, the oxygen gas, the hydrogen gas, and the nitrogen gas, and so on. What makes them have different velocities is that they have different masses. And so the more massive something is, the slower it will be moving at a certain temperature. The smaller the mass, the more velocity something will have at a certain temperature. Um, so one, um, uh, one unit of measurement that, that we're all familiar with is Celsius. Um, Celsius, the Celsius scale is the temperature um, is actually based off of the temperature of water freezing and water boiling. So zero degrees Celsius is when water freezes, 100 degrees Celsius is when water boils. It's not a coincidence that it's nice round even numbers like that. It's because water was used to define that scale. Um, but we have this thing called absolute zero. And absolute zero is the coldest that anything can ever get. There is a limit to how cold something can get. Um, if we sit here and try to make uh, let's, like a piece of ice colder and colder and colder, uh, you cannot infinitely make it colder. At some point, what's going to happen is it will, um, the particles in the ice will stop freezing. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So if you take a look here, this is a solid. And uh, notice how it's got a certain temperature, right? 
Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm actually gonna change this to Celsius. So uh, right now we're at negative 259 degrees Celsius. And if we heat it up, notice how it moves faster because you're adding heat that's increasing the kinetic energy and it, the particles move faster. But what happens if we make it cold? Um, well, if we make it colder, what ends up happening is the particles stop vibrating or they slow down, um, they're, they're, the amount they vibrate uh, reduces. And so is there a limit to how cold something can get? Yes, there is a limit. And that limit occurs when the particles stop vibrating. And so we make this colder and colder and colder. Eventually we get to a point where the particles stop vibrating. And this is absolute zero. Absolute zero is where the movement or the vibrations in the particles are completely gone. And look at what temperature this occurs at. It occurs at negative 273 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is the coldest anything can possibly get in the whole universe. There's nothing that can get colder than that. Um, and so what we do is we have this other scale that we use, which is called Kelvin. And so that is the, uh, the Kelvin scale is based off of, off of the Celsius scale, except it makes negative 273 degrees zero. And essentially what it's doing is it's making absolute zero, zero. So again, uh, the Kelvin scale um, is the absolute temperature scale used um, in the scientific community. And essentially what it does is it makes absolute zero, zero. Um, and absolute zero is the theoretical lowest temperature possible at which all molecular motion stops. Um, what I'll say is we as humans have not achieved absolute zero yet. We've gotten very, very close, like within 0.00006, I don't know. Uh, very close to absolute zero, but not quite. Um, interesting fact, I think that they're trying to use lasers to get to that point, um, which is uh, pretty interesting. But um, to convert between Celsius and Kelvin, we use this equation here. It's really easy. Whatever your temperature is in Celsius, all you have to do is add 273. What I'll say is <clears throat> almost all equations that we use have to, we have to have our temperature in Kelvin. So just a quick note, um, we're going to be using Kelvin for most of our temperature, um, uh, uh, most of our problems that deal with temperature. Um, also, um, a lot of times when we're doing um, scientific experiments and all that, uh, we want to keep certain things constant and so what's been agreed upon in the scientific community is that um, one atmosphere of pressure and zero degrees celsius is considered standard temperature and pressure um, and we will re be referring to this a lot but a lot of times when we talk about uh, you know a certain experiment happening it'll happen at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure. So just know that if a problem is saying that this is occurring at STP, that means it's occurring at one atmosphere of pressure in zero degrees Celsius. And that's it. So um, we're going to use a lot of these uh, new terms to talk about and learn about uh, gases as we move forward. So um, keep them in mind.